One of my favorite, absolute favorite things to do is to speak with other small business owners, especially those people who are at the early part of the curve in building their business. And we do that as often as we can here on Business Unusual as part of Making It TV. And we've got a privilege today of talking with a business owner in West Hollywood, California. His name is Rick Erez. And Rick has a business with a, a fascinating name to me. It's called the Bulldog Brewery. Now, we're going to talk to Rick and find out, A, if there's anything being brewed and how it got the name Bulldog, as well as answering many of Rick's questions regarding business formation, business growth, etc. So, Rick, welcome to Business Unusual. Hi. Thanks for having me here. What a delight. I've looked at your products online. I've looked at your video online, heard a bit about your business. But with that name, Bulldog Brewery, such an interesting name, tell me about the choice of that name. Well, years ago, I got my very first dog, and he's a bulldog, and his name is Bill. And so I themed the name of the company after him, and um, the company, when I first came up with the product, was a beverage to give to our friends during the holidays. And I combined the love for my dog with this beverage that I now make. And, and uh, there you are, it's the Bulldog Brewery. Yes. So we're going to dig into it and have a chance to talk about many things and aspects of the Bulldog Brewery today, Rick, and I really appreciate that. Uh, was having your own business a dream of yours for a long time or not? Um, it always has been. I uh, started out early working for a big corporation, and I didn't like hearing what I heard from the people that I was soon to become. So I knew I had to work for myself. That's a, start, that's a wonderful realization. I often say about people who once in a while or get to the point of getting their courage up to start their own business, when the frustration grows a little bit higher than the fear, you're usually off and running. Yeah. So I know that you've been asking some questions or you have sent in some questions that you want answered, and we'll make a mix of the questions I want to know about you and what you want to know from me. Now, you mentioned that when you're a small business, you do all of the work yourself. Of course you do. You're the chief uh, bottle washer, the sales manager, the HR department all of that wrapped into one. So you asked a question about what are the divisions of the operation that you, when do you begin to hire someone to do some of the work for you? Is that, your, is that fair assessment of your question? Yes, it is. Well, it usually goes like this. In the beginning, you're doing everything. But you begin to, as you get some income, you have to put a price on your time. Nobody has more than 24 hours a day. And most people sleep somewhere between four and eight hours of that day. So therefore, as you begin to have more and more volume of business coming in, you look at the thing, Rick, that is does not require your full attention. Sometimes that may be uh, computer work, IT work. It may be uh, printing. It may be writing some of the brochures, etc. Because your job will remain to be the sales manager, and chief executive of the company. So you put a value in your time. Let's say you now value your time at $25 an hour. Therefore, the tasks that can be done by somebody between $10 and $20 an hour, you look for a person to do that. It can be part-time. It can be on a freelance basis. It can be even these days, some of that work can be done long distance via Skype calls, etc. So you look to Keep your time focused on that thing that brings more revenue and business growth, and you get to the place where you can afford to farm out many of the other tasks. Does that compute for you? Yeah, yeah, that answers a lot of the questions. Now, you ask also when you have a great idea, what do you do first? Check URL, DBA possibilities, license first, then do a market search via internet. What licensing to purchase? It's about the most expensive part of the business. Is that what you found in launching the Bulldog Brewery? Yes. So how did you proceed with those questions? Or well, I went online and I researched what licenses I, I needed to sell the product. And that was one of the most preventative um, 
costs for moving forward. Um, with the full venture, right now I'm in a phase where I'm giving the product away um, via contests. Mm -hmm. So we've set up contests on the internet, and by entering the contest, you receive the product. So let's go back to a couple of those pieces in the question, though. So you did register as a DBA or some other form? Yes, registered as a DBA. Okay. As, as Bulldog Brewery in Los Angeles. So as you consider going forward and hopefully grow the revenues of your business, Rick, you should talk to an accountant as to whether you should form an LLC, that means Limited Liability Corporation, a subchapter S corporation, based on what you consider the big longer term picture for the business. You can do business for an extended period of time simply as a DBA. The, the other forms protect you from liabilities. For instance, uh, you have a product that people put through their mouth and into the body, so therefore you'll want to fairly quickly look at being able to limit liability for anything that might go wrong in that process or somebody has an unfortunate experience with the product, etc. So, but your accountant can best answer uh, that part of it. Uh, as to copywriting a logo, I believe there's a, a cute dog on your logo and nicely done, and so you can then apply the copyright process for that logo in this application along with that name so that you have some protection from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office in being able to preserve it exclusively for your use for this particular application. Some of those things you've got to do fairly quickly. Other things you can do more slowly. As to the form of business, LLC or otherwise, you can take that over a period of time. Going for the logo and that protection, you should do fairly uh, early. I use uh, LegalZoom.com for those kinds of things because going to an attorney attorney can be a rather expensive thing based on their rate card, but I have found uh, satisfaction using LegalZoom. Does that help you at all? It does. What do you think it might cost me to um, take these steps? The total, uh, good question, always paying attention to the bottom line. Uh, on getting the logo fully registered, including the government filing fees of 200 and some odd dollars, et cetera, and the service of uh, LegalZoom in doing that, I think the total was approximately $700. 700 Okay. And is there any um, reason to put a copyright logo on the artwork that I own? The, uh, the copyright thing uh, can be useful. You have the logo and you have what we call the bug the C bug copyright there on your logo. It helps people think twice if anyone is thinking of using or copying your logo without authorization. Okay. Measure. Well, I'm going to look into that immediately. Yes, because you've done a, 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 every printed piece of material I've seen regarding your business shows that you're thoughtful, that you've gotten some uh, creative help or your own creative thoughts, and it presents well, it matches. You know, when you mention the name of a business, Bulldog Brewery, in your particular case, and you see a logo that is it, it's parallel with that, that matches with that. What do I see? I see a bulldog. So I, you know, that makes sense to me. And I say that that's been a thought process, and that kind of thinking can be helpful as you continue to grow your business. Now you have a question here. When do you create an LLC? I leave that between you and your accountant. Okay. Uh, what do you want to brand the most, the product or the logo and great style? So having seen your logo, I say it's very stylish. But brand, you know, the, the word branding gets misused quite often, Rick. Uh, people think that branding is the logo. That's not the case. Branding, strictly speaking, is the experience a person has with a product or a service. Let's take one of the two oldest logos that we know about, Coca-Cola and Ford Motor. Both have logos and brands that are 100 years old, approximately. And you still see the same typeface for Coca-Cola. You still see the same typeface and logo for the oval for Ford Motor. They've been polished. The typeface has been tweaked from time to time over the 100 years. Colors have changed, etc. But that's not the brand. That's the logo. The brand is that sweet beverage and other beverages that is Coca-Cola. That's the brand. 
Ford Motor is not the logo. Ford Motor is that car with Ford written on it and other cars that have had given users and purchases an experience now that's 100 years old. So the brand of a given product is the experience that a person has with the product. Your products. So these come in a bottle and this is a drink. Tell me about how that got formulated and uh, what you want it to bring to your customers. Well, I first started wanting to make a beverage that um, was a hol something like a holiday spirit. Yes. And so I wanted it to be sweet. I wanted it to have alcohol and, and be kind of grown up, so it needed to have coffee. And so I constructed a, a formula that's um, a coffee and vanilla beverage that's kind of syrupy. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and it's sweet, and it and it has multiple uses. And I started giving it to people, and consumed very little of it myself. Had more fun making it, and got all of these great reviews. And people would would say how oh, I used it making brownies, and I used it making ice cream desserts, and 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 then years later, and many reviews later, I decided to. Um, see if there was a possibility that it could become a company. Um, I've had a lot of feedback and it's all been positive. And I've had a lot of people suggest that it become a company. And so I'm, I'm, I'm hanging on the edge there to see if it's possible. You mentioned distributing your product in various ways. Operationally, now that you're, consider yourself by the way in business, I believe you started around 2009, but yes. you are today in business because you're making a product for distribution outside of your four walls there and even beyond the circle of friends that initially talked to you and encouraged you about doing this so I consider you to be in business so let's talk a bit about operations of the business three people running the operation of the company the inventor of the product creating new product regularly a retired chief financial officer and editor and more importantly a technology officer for all the IT graphics and video. So you've got several things working obviously in your favor. That's a, a nice core group that you outlined. At this point in your business, are you feeling the strong need for an additional person on any basis? Part-time, three hours a week, five hours a week, or anything of that nature? Um, I am not quite feeling that, but I I feel I'm going to be needing some help because of the interest from the very first few months where I've been just exposing the product and the idea to people. I think that I start to panic that I'm going to have a fulfillment issue. It is good to think that way. Uh, <clears throat> and I'll, I'll relate a real life story from last week. I was on an airplane from New York to LA and I sat next to a woman who has uh, a business creating skin care products for men. She is fabricating it all herself. She has a functional uh, operating co-partner who's based in uh, the West Coast. And she told me about the number of units that she has to pack and ship in a given week. And it has gone up to, I'll just give a general number, many thousands of dollars per month in packing and shipping and she is just about to hire more hands to do a lot of the packing and shipping while she does the formulations quality control etc so it's always good for for thinking to think at least a half mile ahead if not a full mile ahead and you are right about wanting to establish an infrastructure that can support the increased traffic that you hopefully will be seeing in your business Certainly now, because this is being recorded as the holiday season of gift giving is about to ramp up. Yes. So what have you done toward establishing or at least finding the extra resources that you might need on a high volume? Well, as I make the product and do, all, do each step um, on my own, I, I consider the time and, and what kind of person I would need to do some of the tasks. And... Um, labeling is something I could have somebody do for me, and bottling someone could do for me, and um, and also um, 
running the uh, logistics would also be helpful. Someone that could okay. do all the shipping and and um, ordering new supplies. Somebody so could. a couple of things there. A, uh, there are people that do fulfillment. That process of uh, shipping is called fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And around a place like Los Angeles, there are fulfillment houses. Uh, some of them also do just plain mailing. They also do fulfillment and like that. A key piece, I would say, in looking at your business so far, Rick, is have you talked to uh, give a lab or anyone about the formulation so that you write down the formula as precise as they need it and that they would be able to fulfill if you had 10 orders in a day or 1,000 orders in a day, they would be able to get the formulation together and deliver the finished product to you. I have not had that done yet. Okay. You should look at the labs. It would, because it's a, it's a food product, something that a person ingests, you would talk to a food lab about getting them at least knowledgeable on your part and you on their part so that you could call them up on a given Monday and have your product ready within the same week in the volume you need. Terrific. Yes. And how, uh, again, I have to ask, Nelson, how much is yeah. that going to cost me? That I don't have a set figure for, but uh -huh. by a call and a visit, if you have time, call, telephone, they will quote you uh, what it would cost, remembering that the product, the raw materials cost what they cost, and what they're charging you for is doing the formulation on a volume basis per your formula. It would probably require you going over to visit with one of their in-house people or chemists, laying out not... I mean, the ingredients that you have, you don't have to tell them the formula yet unless you decide to do business with them. I know early on in a business, and justifiably so, sometimes a person is going to be worried about, is somebody going to rip me off? So that is, but you, you need to know where the people are who can help you on a short-term notice. Okay. It says, uh, how do you handle the salon business and the brewery business at the same time? Is that... Realistic? Is that something you, you're curious about? Well, I, I have a very busy um, salon business. I'm a, a hairdresser. Um, Good to know that. Of 30 years. See? Congratulations. <laughs> and taking um, so much hair that you've so given up your own. <laughs> I spend none of that time on myself, as you can tell. Um, and um, I'm very busy doing it, and my spare time which is um, my day off today, for example, and my day off yesterday, I spend um, doing videos and commercials and making product and bottling it and labeling it and, and stay quite busy there. Mm -hmm. So um, I was wondering if um, there was a point where I should cut back on being so busy with the other business and um, focus more on the new adventure. You ask a, uh, an important question, Rick, very important question, and it's up to you to decide. My suggestion to you would be the following. You take a piece of paper and write down a number, a number that you consider a livable income for yourself, and that is your, your number. Uh, I've, I've seen people who have built multi-million dollar businesses, and they started by writing down a number. So you've got that number. Now the good news I presume in the salon business is that you have some customers who have been with you for a very long time and you are their favorite uh, uh, hair care person. So you can then look at in your five days of being in the salon, can you take care of your best reliable customers on a four day a week basis giving you two days to work on the new business one day of leisure though I detect about you you're a pretty ambitious person so it may be four days in the salon and sometimes three days in the business during those times when you have to put in seven full days of effort so that you will you have a certain flexibility I believe in the salon business based on the customers that rely upon you and then taking care of those customers on whatever basis you can. The day will come perhaps with the growth of this business when you say I can only do the salon 
three days, would three days be enough to take care of your best customers? And then beyond that, you're looking at your number that you've written down, ask yourself the question, am I now out of the salon business and into bulldog brewery business? <laughs> that makes sense to you? Yes. Very good. Uh, you have mentioned uh, the exit strategy. What could become be some exit strategy if necessary. Now, when you use the word exit strategy, I make the presumption that you are feeling that you can build a business that may be large enough to sell. And in the beverage business, there have been some wonderful stories about people starting in their kitchen and building a business that opens a new category, creating a, a, a drink or something of that nature, uh, that is then bought up by a large company like Pepsi or Coke or some of the other food companies. Uh, and when you look at the shelves in the supermarket with the energy drinks, that is how many of them started, was in somebody's kitchen or garage. So if that is your thought about exit strategy, first you've got to build a business and all your energy needs to be focused on building the business. Now if you give it the infrastructure, if there's something uh, patentable about your formula and you protect that formula under that name of Bulldog, now you have a, a finite protectable product that if a Coke or a Pepsi or similar came along and wanted to buy it and made you an offer for it, then you have a product to sell. There's two things you have. A, you've got the brand that's protected, you have a product that's in the marketplace, it's shown that people want it and are buying it, so now you have a saleable business. They have their own infrastructures and own chemistry labs and all the rest of it, but you have proven that it's a saleable business. You may add another beverage or two along the way yourself because depending on how much gross volume you're doing and how many products you have in your product line, Rick, then the big guy who's got the big checkbook who might make you a very happy man if you want to sell your business at the time, those are the ingredients. If you're asking about an exit strategy based on the business itself as to whether it's succeeding to your expectations or floundering in the marketplace, there's no exit strategy needed there. You'll come to a day when you'll say, am I enjoying this? Is it nourishing me? Is it providing the income that I consider a necessary income? Yes or no? Well, I'm, I'm thinking about what you just said, and those are all very important things to think about. Um, I am still having fun. I am creating new products all the time. Most of them are by accident, which is quite laughable, but yes. at the same time, seem to be the most inventive and the most creative. And, Very uh, fun. <clears throat> and I think if it wasn't um, a consideration to be a business, I would still make the product every year for all of my friends. Yes. Well, I love the fact that your friends have been guiding you to put it out in the marketplace. And this is the time in that cycle of growing your business. Your, your enthusiasm shows, I've seen your videos on your website regarding making recipes, using your product, etc. So you're obviously thinking about various ways to make more people aware of your product. And as speaking of that, Tell me uh, about your marketing plan as it presently, ex presently exists. Well, we've been marketing the product through contests, as I say, and um, trying to find out if people in this very small demographic where I live like the product and wondering if I can use a small marketing project such as my um, my area beyond my friends and family because I found that was always the easiest um, transactions. Sure. Um, if the product can be marketed in a very small area through a couple of uh, networking groups such as um, um, we do a lot of um, fundraising for um, Stand Up to Cancer and for Ovarian Cancer and I, I show up and I, I do the running and the whole time we're trying to promote the company and show the product and use that um, that as a marketing tool to um, 
show another angle of our of our company aside from how terrific the product is and um, and then marketing on online through all the different social medias with Pinterest and Facebook and um, the, I, I now am hooked into so many social networks I, can, I don't even know them all <laughs> and, uh, Nelson, I didn't have a Facebook page um, three months ago. Very fine. So. Digital marketing and the social media have become more important, and they will no doubt be a part of your ongoing business. Mm -hmm. Marketing. Have you been to a retailer yet to ask them what would have to happen for them to carry your product on their shelves? No, I have not. Why have you stayed away from this so far? Um... I don't know. I I, um, I wasn't sure I was at a point with my product that I could approach somebody um, with that kind of an offer. If, if your friends are drinking it and enjoying it, then uh, it is time for you to at least, as I mentioned, getting some things in order uh, in your infrastructure, like uh, uh, getting the, the logo copyrighted, things of that nature that are not terribly expensive. And it's your own time, obviously, but on your next day off to go into a retailer somewhere within five miles of where you live in, uh, in Los Angeles and ask. They, they have people lining up, of course, to ask if they'll carry their products. Some of my favorite stories in my experience have been from people who went to Whole Foods Market and asked Whole Foods about carrying their product. And in the Whole Foods ecosystem, uh, the individual location managers have a lot of freedom as to what they put on their shelves. It's not a corporate decision. Now, you may have other, a small marketer. It could be uh, a, a beverage store. It could be a BevMo. It could be a, a liquor store that's close by or a liquor and wine store. Wherever the beverages are sold, to talk to the owner directly or one of the larger ones about what is going to have to happen for you to carry my product on your shelves? That will tell you a couple of things, Rick. That will tell you, A, in a larger store, the volume of product that they would want to be serviced with if it takes off and flies off the shelves. That would tell you about delivery schedules. It would tell you about their payment schedules. It would tell you about what other licenses or approvals they might need since it is a beverage. You would need to find out whether the FDA or anybody like that needs to uh, you know, get their fingerprint on your business. All of that will come from that conversation with the retailer. And if it goes to your favor, now you have a single location that becomes the best test market for you, almost the best test market that you can think of. And you have some infrastructure, I hope, to, to not be surprised if suddenly, uh, and I see the bottles over your shoulders, so... I, tell me what those products are there, and I'll, then I'll finish my thought. Well, the taller bottles are the original products that were that were part of the 2009 invention of the coffee dog product. Mm -hmm. And the little bottles are samples that I send out to people that enter our um, top dog contest on our website. Okay. And the short bottle next to it is a product called Coffee Dog Extract, and it's a vanilla extract product that I make that has a strong essence of um, espresso in it. Okay. So if we just focus on the tall bottles there for a moment, uh, and taking a couple of those samples to your retail visit, and because of that name, which is a very creative, you know, Bulldog Brewery. Now, if there is a pet shop in your neighborhood that has a high volume and to have a little standalone display somewhere near the counter there and see if people who are pet oriented anyway and maybe uh, attracted to the name Bulldog Brewery, what's that? Because they're in an atmosphere where dog is very much on their mind and, and just try one of those to see what happens but always you know go and uh, Take yourself and your smile and your charm and uh, one of those, a couple of bottle samples, and you might be surprised by the reception that you get. I'm going to try that, Nelson. I'll let yeah. you know how it goes. How many bottles should I give to somebody? One. 
That's a sample. If they want more, well, they're going to open that themselves. Is it, is it more important they like it? If they like it, yes. If they like it, they'll be happy to have it in their store. Okay. Because then they become your customer, and uh, they will be buying at the wholesale price, and blah blah blah. You know, the 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 the, the system works that way, and. You, you want some feedback other than your family and friends about your product anyway, correct? Yes. Yes, I do. And uh, let me see. On your question list, when and, how to, when and how to scale up the business, how to get publicity for the products. Let's look at the publicity thing. Uh, if there's a friend of yours, maybe among your, your social circle or one of your customers in the salon, etc., is in the PR public relations business who would offer to write a couple of PR releases about your product if you've got a PR release then you can on a on a one-off basis or two-off basis online you'll find companies that offer to distribute your press release via the web and they charge X number of dollars some of them are a little expensive some are more modest. You can do online press releases and find out who fits your pocketbook and budget at the moment. And remembering that you you got to ask for various things, like ask for the meeting to go into a retailer. And on this front, asking friends or customers uh, whether they would be willing to help you. And all you can offer to them at this point is perhaps free product in exchange for their service. It's a barter piece of thinking. You give them some free product, they give you well-written professional press releases. Does that make sense to you? That makes perfect sense. Yes, because I'm very aware in the startup, you don't throw money around, you don't have extra money to throw around. Yeah, I've been doing piece work for a long time. I understand yes. that. And uh, scale up the business. How do you know? How do you know when to scale up the business? I always advise, Rick, and uh, earlier today, I was uh, giving some advice to a, a doctor in Toronto, Canada, who is building up a whole different type of business. And he had a similar question. My emphasis always is because I've been through it myself and starting uh, at least one, two, three businesses. And that is to get some infrastructure in place. The day that you would dread and, and get a migraine would be if one of these people that we've talked about says to you, I need a thousand bottles of that, and I need it by two weeks from now, or I need it by the end, end of this week yeah, delivered, and you would say, oh my gosh. So to build out your resource list and infrastructure, where do you get the bottles? Can you get a discount on a, on a higher volume? your raw materials that go inside the bottle, the labels. Do you have already, do you have uh, 500 or 1,000 labels? Uh, with your accountant and with an attorney on some basis to know the things that you face. To get the people to help you label bottles, fill bottles, close bottles, boxes to ship the bottles in, since it's glass I presume, then to the protective kind of packaging that you would need to be able to ship glass and ship it far away from Los Angeles even. Those are the pieces of infrastructure you want to work on and develop your list of resources and potential people so that if an order like that shows up on a given Monday, you can treat it two ways. You can say to that retailer or group that wants to have a thousand bottles, you can be honest always and say, it would take me two weeks I can't give you a thousand right away. I can give you a thousand over three weeks or something. That's an honest way. And people, because they like your product, will quite often say, okay, I'll be patient. Give me 300 bottles a week. That's okay. That's one way to go. The other way is if somebody gives you an order like that and you say to your resources that you've already got, can you help me deliver what's necessary for you and me to get a thousand bottles delivered in 10 days and be able to say yes to that order. I've seen so many businesses, I've seen people go to trade shows and you should be going to food and beverage trade shows by the way, at least pick one 
that maybe a West Coast food and beverage trade show, show up, set up your booth, put your samples out, and you might be surprised how quickly that can grow. I've seen that happen with a couple of businesses uh, in the early days. So my thought to you is tend to your infrastructure. You've got several products I see, and you want to have those products moving as fast as they can, and that will bring you the revenue to be able to think and see the wider picture, develop more products, and be able to get the help you need. Terrific. How many bottles do you think I should keep on, on site ready to fulfill an order at any time at my size, being so small? Okay. A, uh, how time sensitive is the uh, contents of the bottle? In other words, it has a shelf life of about how long? It has a very long shelf life because it's using uh, it's 50% alcohol, so it's it's alcohol is the preservative and mm -hmm. has quite a long shelf life. Okay. Um, so with a long shelf life, then, uh, and at this stage, you're looking to develop more outlets online or brick and mortar retail outlets. You should probably have. Well, tell me this. Right at this moment, as we're speaking. How many bottles are there in your warehouse? 350. Okay. So 350 bottles. And normally you might sell 350 bottles over what period of time, Rick? Um, well, I don't, we're not that far along launching the company yet, Nelson. We don't, aren't taking any kind of a standing order. Okay. Um, um, we do have order orders in place for the holidays okay, coming up, good. and I'm, I'm prepared to fill those, um, but it's not more than 150 bottles. Okay, so you're at 350 in the warehouse right now. Two things. It needs to be a little bit larger than that, I would suggest, because the real barn burner order period for the holidays comes after Thanksgiving, and you might find that people there popping 10, 15, 20 bottles per order, and you want to be able to fulfill those quickly because the shipping time gets extended during the holidays, no matter how you ship. So therefore, you might want to build it up to the 500 bottle uh, mark in the warehouse because with whatever promotion you're currently doing, social media you're currently doing, etc., it's a pretty good bet, and you won't fall on your, your, your behind even if you only sell 400 as you head into the holidays simply because it has that great shelf life. It can go into uh, the early part of next year and always thinking in terms of the promotional aspect. Is it a Valentine's Day drink? Is it a did it, you know, drink, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you're, with 500 bottles in the warehouse, you are in an, a nice modest sweet spot as long as you're prepared to ramp it up quickly. Thank you. Indeed. This has been an enjoyable conversation today with you, Rick. Uh, uh, for the uh, sake of how long our videos are, we're going to uh, bring it to uh, a close. But let me say this about your business. Oh, here comes the dog. I want to introduce you to the dog. Oh, great. Please do. We're talking with uh, Rick Ares of uh, Bulldog Brewery. And his logo has a bulldog on it. And I presume that in his house there are bulldogs. And now he has the bulldog in his lap. And what is this bulldog's name? Her name is Gertrude. Gertrude. <laughs> How old is Gertrude? Gertrude is two and a half years old. She's got a long life ahead of her. And the picture of her on the label is her sleeping. Yes. Her favorite thing to do. She's like a college kid. She could sleep until 1 o'clock in the afternoon if I didn't make her get up. <laughs> Do you let Gertrude occasionally sample your products? Absolutely not. She's not old enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rick, this has been a delight. And what I would love to have happen at some point is for us to talk again about what's going on in your business life, let's say, three or so months ahead of now, come back and have another conversation because by that time you will learn some important lessons. No doubt we make mistakes along the way and you will have a couple of those things where you say, oh, what was I thinking by doing that at the time? But business 
a business is a living, breathing thing that will test you at various times, make you smile at various times, and hopefully bring you a, a great deal of happiness for having had an original idea, taking it to the marketplace, being welcomed in the marketplace, and look at your bank account sometimes and say, I did good. So I <laughs> love that aspect about small business ownership, and uh, I wish you so well with developing further Bulldog Brewery, and we look forward to another conversation. Thank you. I look forward to it, too, and you've been very supportive, and check your mail, because I think a bottle of coffee dog's going to be showing up. Ah, I'll look forward to that. And Thank we want your review, Nelson. We want your review. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And Roger Yao, thank you so much for facilitating today's uh, meeting. And uh, Roger and I will be together talking with other business owners again soon on Business Unusual. Bye now. Sure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.